Your opponent's responses. I mean, when they see this deck just go off and plus, what is what has been like some reactions you may have gotten? Uh, for the most part, most of the reactions are, "What is this? What does this do?" So I just tell them to read the cards, because reading is fundamental. You know, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players don't read. So when they read and they look at the cards and they're like, "Oh, that's really good." Hey guys, welcome to the lounge. My name is John, I'm a content creator for Bomani Lounge. Got another special deck profile for you. Hi, my name is Dwayne. You know me in the Bomani Lounge Discord as Phoenix, and I'll be bringing you today my Invoke Generator deck list. So without further ado, we're gonna get straight into this. So I play Triple Alistair, because, you know, without Alistair, there is no Invoke. And he's the main he's the main normal summon of the deck. There's no other normal summons. Followed by that, I play Triple Droll and Lockbird because I'm making my opponent draw a card, so after that I don't want them adding any other things to their hand. And then for the generator monsters, the one ofs, yep, generators. It's a new archetype that came out of uh, Mystic Fighters. So what we got going on here? Let's check this out. I play one Nagelfar, or you know, generator boss of fire. What does he do? Uh, what he does is he can tribute a generator or a beast type monster to protect all cards on the field from being destroyed, and it's all once per turn. And you can only control one of each generator on the field. Uh, after that, I play. This guy right here, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, but he's the boss of iron. And what he does is he can tribute a machine and or generator card and special summon a generator from the head of a different name. And again, they all have the same effect of they can only control one generator of that name on the field. Uh, after that, I play one generator boss of light because I only own one. You know, hook a bundle up if y'all need. I need a second one. Look me out. Um, what he does is, or what she does, when she special summon or normal summon, she search a uh, generator card from the deck added to hand. Uh, it's basically what they've been playing with Lone Fire to just get her straight out. She's also a plant. Go figure. Uh, I play. Two generator boss of doom because it's maleficent. She's a bad bitch. She does stuff. <laughs> Basically, what she does is she's a monster reborn by tributing a zombie and or a generator monster. I play two generator boss of swords. What is that? What he does is tribute warriors or generators. Um, and then destroy that many cards on the field, and then your opponent draws that many cards that were destroyed. Some people play him at one. I like him at two because he's an interruption. It's not bad. I play two genera generator boss of ice. This guy is a walking, talking horn of heaven. So I can tribute a worm or Generator monsters and negate a summon of a special summon monster. That's all he does. It's not bad. I play one nightmare Idly because it's all level nines. She works well with level nines. And then she's special summon. She protects all level nines from being destroyed by card effects. Pretty good. For the spells, I play two invocations because Alistair invocation, self explanatory. One tower forming, self-explanatory. Triple generator boss stage. Boss stage, what is that? Do? So boss stage is their uh, generator field spell card. Every time my opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand during their turn, I can special summon a generator monster from my deck in defense, and then I special summon as many tokens as possible. Um, the special summoning of a monster from the deck in defense is not once per turn, only the tokens. 
So it literally gives you field advantage and it fuels all of your generator monsters. Play three. No more, no less. Triple meltdown. Three more Alistars. I also play triple world legacy monstrosity because again level 9 deck special summons a level 9 from the hand or I can special summon two level 9s from the deck defense it's needed triple generate a boss quest so basically this is your searcher for the deck apart from the generator uh, plant Mardell it reveals a generator in hand Search up to two speller traps with different names from the deck, add them to your hand, and then you place the revealed monster on the bottom of the deck. That's all it does. It's really good. For the traps, I play one generator boss room. You can search it with Mardell, you can search it with boss quests, and what this does, when your opponent responds to a generator card, you can discard a card, and then you make that effect make draw a card. It's really good when you have the field spell on board because then it nets you another level nine monster in defense. So you're always gonna have a monster on the field. Really good. Two, there can only be one because I don't really care about different types because all the generators are different types of monsters from zombies to warriors to plants to beasts there can only be one really really good in this deck I play triple generator boss fight this particular card is necessary for the deck because it gives you a field spell from either the deck or the graveyard and it activates it. Makes your opponents draw one, so when you activate it on their on their turn, you're literally getting a generator monster in defense and a field full of tokens. Sounds busted, bro. Pluses. Solid does. Pluses. And the last two cards in the deck. What was our first game? Trickstar Reincarnation. What? Cause Droll Trickstar Reincarnation, really, really good. Why not, right? Why not? Especially when all your generators are making your opponent draw cards. You banish their hand, hit them with that Droll. GG. So this is a fun deck that you choose to play against, like at Logos and stuff like that? This is a fun deck that I decided to play, again, just for fun, because I was bored of the meta. I've always liked Alistair. I've played him from the very, very beginning. So how does this deck perform against, you know, certain meta matchups? Like you have Salad still. Uh... I've tested it against Orcus. It's decent. It can hold its own, but it's still lacking more cards to push it over the edge to make it go into competitive. This is more like a table 500 deck that you can uh, legit just play for fun, play casually, play at your locals. It'll net you some wins, it'll net you some losses. Um, but feel free to edit, tweak, cut, add whatever you want to it to make it better. I enjoy it, it's fun. I have an extra deck if you want to see the extra deck. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at that next. We're going to go right into the boss monsters that Alistair always summons. We're going to go with two Invoke Mechas. Because why not? It's Mechaba. It's Mechaba. If you're not playing Mechaba, you're not playing Invokes. Plain and simple. I play one Invoke Kaliga because in the Orcus matchup, you banish a dark, you make him. He sits there, they get one effect, they get one attack. They can't get over him because your generators are on the field protecting him. You win. I play one Raijin because uh, boss of uh, swords is a wind. So he literally nets me a Raijin, which is also an interruption on your opponent's turn. It's a book of moon. I play the one Kakoitis. Uh, Kakoitis basically says you can't target him and he can attack in defense with his attack. So he's 1800 attack, 
29 defense. So you'll be attacking for 18 all the time. You don't have to worry about switching him. So those Boral Sword FDKs, he's in defense. You're only attacking once. I play Invoke Elysium. Elysium is basically Captain Planet. On the field, he's treated as every attribute. And then basically what he does is targets an invoked on the field or in the graveyard, banish it, and then he banishes all cards, all monsters on the field with that attribute. So good play is target himself, banish all Salaman greats which are fire, banish all Orcus which are dark, uh, banish all lights, so no light swords, who knows, all winds, you know, water, no more paleos, no more frogs, really good. And you make, you literally make him by going any of your uh, exceed monsters plus any of your invoke monsters that you already used in the graveyard. It's really easy. I play the one BLS link because generators are all level 9. Automatically gives him his immune ability, can be targeted. Pretty busted. Double VFD because, again, all level 9s. Easy access. Locks out your opponents from doing too much on their turn. Yeah, still a solid card. Yep. Uh, so, one invoke got away from me. And he popped up right here. It's the one, the one and only Purgatrio. Everybody knows what Purgatrio does. He ends games. He beats over all your monsters. And he doesn't care. I play one Phantom Fortress. Again, another level 9. Three different effects. He's like a Trishula. He can banish a card from the graveyard, he can banish a card from the hand, he can banish a card from the field. 29 beat stick. What's not to ask for? I also play an Infinite Track Earth uh, Slicer. What's uh, that Basically, it's two level nines. Uh, what he does is, when he destroys a monster, he equips it. So, beat over an Orcus monster, he equips it. No Orcus in the graveyard for them to do anything else. I can detach materials from him and then pop them any cards on, on my opponent's side of the field. Spot removal, disruption I guess, 3100 beat stick. Alistair Link, invokes, enough said. All Mirage, Alistair, invokes, enough said. Secure guard now. You go into Salaman Great from normal summoning the Alistair. You go into the secure guard now. You make your level 9 Mechaba. And then you hit it with the monstrosity. Special summon 2. You go into VFD with 3 materials. Your opponent isn't playing that turn. No Yu Gi Oh! No Yu Gi Oh! Unfortunately, I don't have a side deck because this is just a fun deck. Uh, but side decks are usually generic and based on personal preference. So you, if you're planning on taking this to anything other than a locals, you can adjust your side deck to, to fit. So how's your success been? I mean, at locals playing this deck. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've, you've played it in a couple matchups. How has that been? Um, I took it to a locals two weeks ago, and I went one one one. I won my first round, I lost my second round, and then I drew my third round because of time. But my board was, uh, my ending board was a VFD, a Mechaba, and uh, the field spell plus some generator monsters. And he had no way of outing my board. Time was called and we, we ended with a draw. Seems kind of tough. But, you know, for a deck that's just a fun deck to hold up in a tournament like that, it's pretty good. He played uh, Black uh, Raid Raptors. Interesting. And again, the field spell gives me tokens, which allows me to use all my generators, which are quick effects, to tribute the tokens and just negate, disrupt, special summon, make wall. It literally is one of the most well-rounded decks to play because uh, the owner of Bimani Lounge has a saying. There's offense, defense, special teams. 
and I think this deck, once it gets what it needs to go further, will be that kind of a deck. So it'll be able to be aggressive, it'll be able to be defensive, and it'll be able to interact with your opponent. But the way it worked out was quality deck. Well, you heard it here about Mountie Lodge. Thank you so much for the deck profile. You're most welcome, sir. Have a good one. You too.